Get a pair of bananas. 35 dollars $40, These are not Walmart binoculars, by the way. These are uh, uh, Orion uh, uh, Ultra View. They run about 150, 160, 160, 70 dollars, something like that. I got it uh, cheaper than that. I got it on their clearance page many years ago. They'll, you'll never find it there again. Uh, but I, after looking at a bunch of binocular reviews, the guy, I think it was Dennis DeSico, said, Fuji's are the best, $1,500. Wow. He said, the, uh, that's Fuji 8x42. This is the Orion 8x42. He says they are 90% as good as the Fuji's at 10% of the price. So I got them. <laughs> good. You can also get a pair of 15x70s, but you're going to need a tripod to support them because they're sort of heavy. It's hard to, hard to hold them. Are they stabilized, the Fuji's? I no, mean, the, uh, no. I wish I had an image stabilized. Oh, before I go any further, uh, oh, never mind. I'll, 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 keep, I'll continue on. Okay. I also. Uh, Yes. I just want to talk about the macro for one. If you get over seven power, yeah. you really have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ten power. Ten power is max. But I, I these are eight by forty twos. I love them. I have to lean on a hood of my car. Yeah. yeah I think so. The, the eight by forty twos has a nice wide angle. It's perfect for finding things, and then I can get it in my telescope. Okay. Well, that's that. That's the first handout. Second handout, sir. It's called Avoiding the Trash Scope Trap. And this is pretty well self-explanatory. There's a lot of reading here. Four pages worth. Thank you. And it starts off, first sentence, we go with another article that experienced amateurs can ignore. <laughs> this is intended for readers who don't know anything or don't know much about purchase of a telescope. And it goes on to define a trash scope. Uh, plastic lenses. Uh, this might not have plastic lenses, but the uh, focus or the uh, microscope has plastic lenses. Now this is the Bushnell uh, equatorial refractor. It's even got a little motor here. It's button batteries. I've never seen it work. I, I, I just, <laughs> what? Oh, by the way, these three telescopes were given to me by people who didn't know how to use them. Well, so okay. I was going to try to fix them up and make them decent for somebody. And battery just lights up a light seat. Yeah, that's just the battery. There's no way that's motorized. Yeah, well, it's got it's a, a it's illuminator. It's maybe the illumination. Okay. Anyway, this <laughs> this <laughs> another bad, another drawback of this is the uh, the eyepiece is 0.965 inch, not quite an inch. At least the Bushnell has an inch and a quarter eyepiece. Takes an inch and a quarter eyepiece. Here's a Celestron. Even Celestron, even the good telescope manufacturers make cheap telescopes. This is not a, as bad as those, as that one. It's a little bit more sturdy. So that one's a little more sturdy. It's got the this thing that makes it keeps it from wiggling too much. Again, though, the finder scope is plastic and it's a little hard to focus, but it does also have inch and a quarter eyepieces, which is an advantage. So this is a 60 millimeter. Celestron, and this is mediocre scope. Now, these two are good. Uh, Orion Company, uh, I, I wish I owned stock in the company because I've got six Orion telescopes and a pair of Orion <laughs> binoculars. But this is my, my favorite, my grab and go scope, my 80 millimeter refractor. And this is a four and a half inch daub which I bought for my grandchildren. I was hoping, I bought this before they even were old enough. I said, I hope someday one of my grandchildren gets interested in astronomy. This is a perfect scope for a young kid or for somebody starting out with astronomy. It's very stable, four and a half inches. It's decent size, takes inch and a quarter eyepieces, keeps collimation very well. When my granddaughter, Samantha, was in sixth grade, she got did a science project dealing with astronomy and she got interested and I gave her the scope. She used it for about a year and a half, two years, and she outgrew it. So then I gave her now she has 120 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> This is telescope. Oh my goodness. This is Samantha's telescope. The Orion XT8. So this is the, your best bang for your buck. You can get, I think this costs about $200. 
at Orion. You can get this for 180. Uh, in fact, that, that one on the front page, you can get the, the backpack and the, the uh, tripod with it. I paid about 125 for the tripod and 180. Well, I didn't pack, actually pay 180. I bought this from Stu Bieber when he upgraded his scope. So I paid about $50 for that, I think. Anyway, that's avoiding the trash scope trap. Uh, the scope of raffling off is the same as that eight inch, but the upgraded model. Right, right. It's got some, yeah, it's got a different. It's got more bells and the adjustable, the adjustable uh, uh, trunnions, and it's got some bells and whistles and a better focuser. So I've got two other handouts here, and you know, you know if you want them, you can have them. Uh, one's called, this is called Lesson 2, Getting Started in Astronomy. And I say, uh, we talked about binoculars, planets, and this is Lesson 1, by the way. Uh, there, I said there's three types of telescopes, and I've got two of them right here, and the refractor and the reflector. I didn't bring it, cast a grain. What's the best telescope to buy? This is the answer we always give. There is no best telescope, because no one telescope will do everything. The one that you use. That's right. It depends on your desires. What you want it for, how much, how big, how, how big a scope you can handle, and how much you're willing to pay. And I said, it's often just said the best telescope is one you will use. You got one that's too big and cumbersome, you're not going to use it, it's going to sit in the closet. Uh, or if it's get one that's too small to do what you want, you're not going to get much use out of it. So I said, you might even consider borrowing a telescope. That's what I did once uh, when I had an 8-inch job, and then Orion came out with a 10-inch in telescope. I figured, man, that's got 50% more light gathering power than my 8-inch, but I can't afford it. So I sold my 8-inch job, and then I had to get some more money to go with it to pay for the 10-inch. So for a while, for about two months, I didn't have a telescope. I borrowed one. From Ted Forte, <laughs> and I used his eight-inch dog for a couple months until my ten-inch came in. Anyway, uh, if you want one of these, you can pick one up afterward. I'm not going to pass these out, but this is—it's uh, got some information on what I do with the telescope, how to observe, align the finder, have a list, what is there to look at, keep a record, keep a log. Uh, it's got some references at the back, and in lesson one. It's just basically, basically steps. Step one, get a pair of binoculars. Step two, get a planisphere or a star wheel. You can get a small one for $10, Barnes & Noble, or a nice big plastic one for $20. That's my preference. Check out some books in the library, and I've got my three favorite books listed. Go out in your backyard at night with binoculars and planisphere. Just learn the constellations. This is what I tell people to do. Then if you're still interested in astronomy after learning the constellations, and every club, come to our events, look for different telescopes, ask questions, and find out what, what suits you. And I also say pick up a copy of an astronomy magazine. Yes. Where's my astronomy magazine? Here it is. Must have. I used to have both the subscriptions to Astronomy and Sky and Telescope. Unfortunately, my S&P uh, 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 subscription expired, and I... I didn't renew it in time, so I got I still get Astronomy Magazine, but uh, the uh, Ted Forte is a contributor to Sky and Telescope sometimes, so I need to get my, my S&P back. Yes, sir? Is the back page in the Astronomical Handbook this year? Yes, it is. I don't know. I don't plan on doing the, uh, the RASC handbook. Let me see. Oh, hold on. This is the 2019. You can get this now through Sky and Telescope's shop. Shop at Sky. And if you buy it through Canada, the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, it's going to cost you $35 because it's 25 plus shipping. 28 plus shipping, something like that. You can get it at Sky and Telescope, s and shop at Sky. $25 price. So that's what I would recommend. I'm not going to order them in bulk this year because you get just as good a deal 
through sky and telescope. But for people that start off on the astronomy, that, that's a great book. Oh man, this Very is good. Good everything. You can learn the first chapter, first couple chapters. It's an education yeah, in good. astronomy. And then the, the most useful part is the month by month. Mm -hmm. All uh, the events. Every events, events mm -hmm. every day of every month, plus the moons of Jupiter. And another chapter has the moons of Saturn. It's got a section on the moon. And it's got a section on comets and meteors and planets. And, oh, it's, it's excellent. Question. Yes, sir. The handouts you have, uh, would you be averse to me putting them on Canvas for my students? I get oh, out of no, 24 no. students, I normally get two or three every semester. I'll we'll ask you know, about stuff buying telescopes. Not at all. I'll scan them and put them up there. And Did first, you get the first two? I got the only one I got was a boy in the trash. Send them to them digitally. Yeah. yeah, if you have them digital, that'd be cool too. I can look up your email or whatever. It's on the PDF, George. Okay. So, question. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Do you know if there's any scopes on the market right now on the cheap side that still sell solar eyepiece filters with them? I have never seen a solar eyepiece filter. I, 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 no. We always recommend if you're going to use. Not supposed to use that. Solar, any solar I was just equipment. curious. You need a filter that will cover the whole right. aperture, not the eyepiece, because they're dangerous. I almost got blinded by I've one, never of my, seen as, one. A, as a child. I've seen one. When I was yeah, my I first telescope they, was a reflector, and I almost got blinded uh, by one. They, they probably don't sell them anymore. Yeah. I haven't seen one. Good thing. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Always warning. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. If you want these getting started, things are up here if you want them at the end. Good piggyback is for a permanent observatory. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right in there. Anybody got anything else to add?